Do you know where you stand with your boss? When's the last time you thought to yourself, wow, today's my performance review or my quarterly check-in. I can't wait. I know I'm going to feel deeply acknowledged and valued when it's over. Sadly, we have a long way to go before that's common for many of us. Part of the problem with our current notions of accountability is inherent in what that word has come to mean. It has literally been reduced to nothing more than an accounting of our work. In most companies, it means blame, shame, and punishment. It means never really knowing where you stand. We fill out forms, give them to our boss, he puts in ratings and comments about us, sends it off to HR, and then to put the icing on the cake, all of our work gets reduced to a number, a category, a label. I recently talked to a client of mine who was irate after his performance review. He said, she gave me a three. I can't believe it. I've been a four my whole career. In other companies, I was a five. I've always been top rated. Now, just because she gets a limited quota of how many four she can give out, I get stuck with a three. Sound familiar? Listen to the hurt and irrational conclusions in his complaint. All of the positive impact that a conversation about his contributions should have had was destroyed with a number. Instead of walking away feeling proud of what he'd accomplished, with an honest understanding of where he could improve and the commitment to doing so, he walked away insulted and infuriated by a number. He's lost perspective about himself, his value, and his boss. And he's not alone. One neuroscience study showed how our brains react to being categorized. The part of our brain that signals danger, our amygdala, gets triggered by a sense of threat. We literally feel unsafe when we get categorized with a single rating. It doesn't even matter what the rating is. At our deepest level, we feel invisible to the person who should theoretically know our work best and threatened by feeling out of control over our own destiny. And nobody should have to feel that way about their contribution in the world. In my research, I learned that 91% of employees feel that holding people accountable is one of their company's top leadership development needs. That's because only 14% of employees feel their performance is managed in a way that motivates them to do their best work. We've dehumanized the very process that should be most sacred within our companies. How we honor people's contributions and help them reach their full potential. My research revealed that when accountability is seen as unfair, you're four times more likely to have people behave dishonestly and unjustly. But when it's viewed as fair, you're four times more likely to have people do the right thing and tell the truth. It's time we flip the script and put dignity and justice back into accountability. Kathleen Hogan, the chief people officer at Microsoft, told me how they're dramatically changed how they talk about contribution and performance. She said, being open to failure helps us balance a growth mindset with accountability. We're learning to not just reward success, but also reward people who fell short while getting us closer. Learning from our mistakes gets us closer to the desired results. That's a new form of accountability for us. To focus on a more collaborative environment, Microsoft has shifted their performance review emphasis from individual contribution to a more balanced focus that adds contribution to others, collaborating and helping, and leveraging others, asking for help, and building on others' ideas. By evaluating and rewarding a more cohesive set of behaviors, Kathleen says people are learning to work more collaboratively and with purpose. If we want more justice and equity in our organizations, we have to make sure the processes that measure contribution have dignity and honor as their foundation. In a world where we succeed more on offering valuable ideas and insights than we do on making things, who we are and what we do is more fused than ever. Every contribution is a reflection of its contributor. So how's accountability in your world? Do people see you as a source of dignity when it comes to their work? Do you honor their contributions? When they make mistakes or fall short of your expectations, do you make the conversation restorative so they can safely learn? Here's what I want you to do, to put dignity back into the conversation. I'm intentionally starting you with something beautifully simple, yet powerful. If you're a leader, do this with someone who reports to you, and if you're not, then do it with a peer whose work you may have benefited from. I want you to think back over the last few weeks to a moment where someone accomplished something that
that was challenging. Maybe it even took some sacrifice. But you know it went a bit overlooked. I want you to approach that person and say, I sense that project you finished really took a lot more than I can see to get done. But I'm sure you must be very proud of having accomplished it. I'd love to hear the story of how you did it. When we ask others for the story behind their contributions, we reconnect and honor the relationship between the contribution and them as the contributor. As they tell you the story, watch how they light up. Watch how animated they become, telling you about the breakthrough parts, the hard parts, and the fun parts. Remain fascinated by their story. Ask questions to probe into some of their choices. Where they struggled or faced setbacks, ask what they learned. Stay curious and let them know what insights you've gleaned from their example. That's what it takes to put dignity back into the work we hold others accountable for. I'll be hosting a live webinar next week to have an honest conversation about what it means to put dignity into accountability. You can click the link below where you're watching this video to register. During that time, I'll be sharing some other ways to have hard but honoring conversations with people about when they fall short and about what it looks like for accountability processes to have justice as their foundation. So do this work and bring your answers to the webinar and let's have a spirited conversation about how redefining accountability to include dignity and justice is one important part of learning how to be honest. <laughs>